Fog Entertainment is back again with a brand new video and it's a brand new character spotlight. We're looking at Happy Lumen of the Sons of Anarchy universe, of course. His life spans 79 episodes between SOA and the Mayans MC and I've been looking forward to doing this one for a while. So let's dive into it and let's dive in to his background, of course. Because Happy, he was born in Bakersfield, California. Now his date of birth... It's never really disclosed, to be honest, but we're going to assume it's at some point in the 60s because the actor is about 58. And I'm going to assume his age is not far off that. So, guys, 58, we put him at about... He was born in 1965. Damn it, we're going to go with 1965 that Happy was uh, born. Now, in terms of his background, now, of course, his mother uh, suffered from MS. She's not doing... Too well. He loves dogs. He's a he's a dog guy. Damn it. Um. And according to the Sons of Anarchy comics, he first met Tig in 1987, and he killed. That was his first two kills. His first two murders that he committed. He got two matching smiley face tattoos. Happy snapped and killed. Um, Will damn it. And his accomplice with an axe. Uh, that was in Tacoma, and we see. Happy and Tig. So the first ever appearance of Happy and Tig meet was in 1987, according to the Sons of Anarchy comics, which, you know, if you don't want to consider that, like, the real story, then that is fair enough. But see, at the end of the day, that just goes to show you that what happened in the Mayans MC Season 5 is an even bigger disgrace. You know, Tig and Happy, brothers for 36 years, and what, what's going on here, man? Absolute disgrace is what's going on here, but we're going to assume... The happy, I mean, happy's been a brother here for like four decades, since the 80s, guys. But we are first introduced to the character in the pilot episode at church in a club meeting, of course. Uh, the sons are trying to reloc relocate their weapons. They may think Happy may be able to help with that, but we get a couple of funny scenes between Tig and Happy. Again, delving into their relationships, like, those little tie boys are getting expensive, huh? And then, yeah, they get into a boxing match, and which I thought was a brilliant wee fight, but no one wins it. They hug it out. It's all going to end in beer hugs, beer hugs, and bloody Guinness, damn it. Now, of course, throughout season one of Sons, he is a member of Tacoma at this point, and um, he gets his 13th happy face tattoo um, throughout this season, of course. He commits murders like the most notable one, I'd probably say, is Marcus Alvarez's son, Isaiah Alvarez, uh, so, and he also took part in the whole Mayan warehouse destruction where it's kind of unclear if he killed anyone, but you know, if he did, he's got 13 to this point, so who knows. He does state though in the episode, better half, that his sick mo mother still lives in Bakersfield, and he's thinking of going nomad to take care of her. Clay's response was, there's always a seat at that table for you, my brother, and he hugs him, and of course, he, do he is pretty fundamental in getting... Cherry and Cammy Hayes up north through Canada. So happy. Even in season one, he's only been like what, like three episodes, four episodes or whatever. By the time we get the episode ten, and he already feels like an established character. He's not even a member of the charter. Tacoma grows them well with Happy and Kozik. Um, really love Happy man. He's a great guy. Damn it. He is also um a part of the season one finale where he does go. In the episode, The Revelator, tell me who's that writer, John the Revelator. He was with Tig and uh, Chebs when they had to go kill the bastard witness. But then Jack showed up and of course he dealt with Tig and Happy's like, yeah, and he was like, you listen to me, brother, even though it was Chebs. But Chebs and Happy fled, fled the scene and then Happy is later seen at the funeral of Donna Winston. And we do know in the year 2009, around that time period, Happy obviously was a nomad. And that is when he took the contract of killing Marisol and Felipe Reyes through uh, Bordeaux. He did it through Packer. He's like, Packer's really anal about that shit. He writes that stuff down, as he explains uh, to Easy and Angel. But guess what, guys? That's a little bit down the road. I'm literally just talking about the fact that this is when he tried to kill Felipe and Marisol. Of course, he shot Marisol in the throat. She bled out. Uh, Felipe wasn't there, but Easy Reyes did catch him, and Easy Reyes set after him, and Easy Reyes, in the process, manages to see Happy's face, but Happy manages to escape Easy Reyes, but Easy, sadly, in the process, kills the cop, which put this whole shit storm in motion. And yeah, it literally did, because if Easy doesn't kill the cop, he doesn't go to jail, and therefore doesn't become a rat, probably doesn't become a Mayan either. That's what I like. 
We can bury Mayans, right? And Elgin James did go off the rails, undeniably, right? But I just love the fact, like, even Happy just doing a simple kill, like, led, like, the Mayans' demise, like, 15 years later than the line. And I love stuff like that, rather than just, like, you know, completely random shit that kills characters. But, yeah, maybe I'm just a mark for that sort of stuff. But, of course, um, that was Happy doing that in Santa Padre. So we've really no idea, like, well, we've a rough idea, but we've really no idea if this took place, like, during Season 2, between 1 and 2, or, like, we know it was after, it was between... When he when he uh, left Tacoma and before he patched into Sam Crow, which probably gives you like a, I'd say probably um around about a year. Uh, Bobby though, he is at Bobby's homecoming in Charming. Damn it, he's back in Charming um, throughout season two. I mean, he doesn't have a massive role to do in season two, um, but of course, he he basically just serves his muscle in this season as like a nomad. Member, of course, Clay always told him there'd be a seat at that table, but he also gets brought into the whole trap at Sobel's uh, Christian Gavarin, Christian Sir, Murata. Of course, him, Clay, Teg, Juice, Bobby and Jax all get arrested. Um, they manage to survive jail, Juice does get shivved, happy, uh, doesn't really want to see Clay and Jax fight, but he does... It does well. So you could argue here with Chibs getting blown up and Juicy is just sticking around because Sam Crow are light on numbers. But I think he, even though he's a nomad, he does feel more like Sam Crow. He's beginning to feel like Sam Crow. Uh, but I'll tell you what, you could argue probably due to like his popularity, the fact he's an original Hells Angel as well, which helped with the actor is, obviously helps. And I think he just, I, I, you know... It's weird, like, obviously you could have just got another hard man, but it would be hard to imagine this universe without Happy. He's left his impact, and by God, his impact was pretty good, is what I'm going to say. But yeah, in season two, of course, he helps him throughout, helps him kill, I'm so proud of you, when Jack's killed uh, Weston. Of course, he's also at the docks when Cammy Hayes kidnaps Abel. And then as we go into season three, of course, there isn't much of a time skip going into season three. It literally is just a couple of days. That gives Cammy Hayes a chance to get to Belfast and Jax is just sitting there moping my book, feeling clinically depressed for himself. Happy as seen throughout this season as well. Um, at the start, he's a half sack wake, etc, etc. And then eventually we do get the big foot scene, guys. We get it, damn it. Because um, Chebs mentions that Happy would rather fall here than up north. Um, and then of course... The, that's the whole conversation with Kozik. So it looks like we're going to get Happy and Kozik photo in at the same time. Thank God Happy is uh, joining Sam Crow. We need Happy, damn it. We also see the wee side mission. He goes on with Bobby and Piney in order to get meds for his mum. Um, precious is medicine cabinet. Of course, that doesn't really end well for them, but then eventually it does end well for them because the rest of the cavalry show up and it's all good, damn it. We get the foot. Happy foots in to Sam Crow. Absolutely epic, guys. Sadly for Kozik, he is not in. As for Happy though, he doesn't really do an awful lot in the rest of season three. He he, he does go to Belfast where he does get a, a, quite a few great lines in. Of course, the mighty Liam O'Neill. Jacks tasks Happy and just to follow O'Neill. Um, O'Neill says, do you, "I'm gonna murder a shite. You boys wanna watch?" Happy then asks, "Just do you?" And then he's like, "I'm good, thanks." Again, I thought that was a uh, quite. You know, I think that was epic. I mean, that, that whole fucking scene was epic. The explosion, the line for you, Neil, and, like, Happy asking that is so happy. Like, you know the funny thing about it is? Happy's not even asking it as a joke. Like, he's actually asking it as, like, a legit serious question. And to me, that just makes it um even better, man. We also seen him uh, earlier on when they first arrived in Belfast. Hap, kill one of his men. Oh, yes, I will. <laughs> fucking brilliant Happy, man. Exactly what we could ask for, and uh, yeah. So, uh, we get back to Belfast, of course. Jax has got his son. Sam Bell has been wiped off the face of the earth, pretty much, apart from like Seamus and Luther and co. And uh, Maureen Ashby has left some letters in the bag. And of course, the offence of season three play it like they're supposed to. Happy helps, you know, they do the trade with the Russians, get Jimmy O back. He helps them kill Stahl and Jimmy O. And he then has to go to jail. We've got him, Tig, Clay, Bobby and Juice, all five of them staring Jacks down because you read it. I had no choice. And that is how season three ends for Happy. Absolutely insane. Moving in though to season four. The boys are out of jail. So after 14 months, Happy is a lucky duck because everyone else is out. So he 
is happy. Pun intended, because that's his name, folks. So, he doesn't really, in terms of a story, he doesn't have his own, but what happy does have for its season four is a lot of great lines, such as when Miles kills, um, not Miles, just kills Miles, he, he shoots him, lying bitch, which I like, did you get him? I like that, I like that a lot. He also is privy to when they killed the Russians in like the season four premiere, all that good stuff. But, you know, I've buried the Mayans on a lot of numerous occasions, but without the Mayans, the happy character wouldn't have been as good. So, you know, the Mayans, we know we've made a hell of a lot of videos on this channel about said Mayans, but, you know, and, you know, a lot of them kind of negative, and especially in this final season about how much it went off the rails and all that good stuff and the ratings, the ratings crash, even though they've been crashing for a long time. But for me, you know, they definitely took the happy character to another level. Now, at the end of these videos, character spotlights, of course we do um, a rating out of 10. I'm not saying it's elevated them straight to like an 11, but, you know, we'll, we'll see where we get there. And, uh, yeah, and we've also got the scene where he's talking about Leroy. Leroy, he's got to die like a lot. But throughout the rest of season four, he helps them in their tasks. If you look at the episodes towards the end with the cartel, beefs and etc., him, Jax and um, Chibs are like the only three that are active for like the last couple of episodes. I mean, you do have a few prospects at the end of the season. A few people get released like Juice, etc. And then he gets sitting at the table. He is to the right of Chibs. He's making his way up to that sergeant at arms spot, but he's no quite there. Because, of course, Jax is at the head of the table at the end of season four. We've got... Bobby to his left. Now, he wanted it to be OP, but he's dead. Going into season five, and Chibs is to his right. But happy, he's got a wee eye, he's got a wee smiley face tattoo on that Sergeant Arms patch as we head closer to season six. But throughout season five, he, you know, he helps Jax and Chibs when they try and hunt down Charlie, because of course, Charlie. This is Frankie Diamond sent after a Jackie boy. Oh god, my shoulder blade, man. Dislocated it earlier playing tennis, guys. Yep, probably a line you never thought you'd hear uttered on the Fog Entertainment channel, but you know, we bring you everything, even if it's tennis or related or not. But happy continues throughout this season. You, you see in like the later seasons, especially like with Jax, um, like Happy, etc., get tasked with like helping with the with the children, player. Helping with Jax's kids, um, Jax and Abel. But throughout season five, you know, he wasn't in jail when the likes of Chibs, Happy, Jax and Tig had to go inside. Um, and he did help Bobby and Clay, you know, lead the club for... I mean, it was probably, it was probably about, you know, 28 hours or something in those regions, the amount of time they were in jail for. Um, of course, he helped carry Opie's calf and um, and throughout season five, he did his... Part. But what's actually intriguing about Happy in some of the thoughts and discussions, like obviously in season five you've got the the whole beef between the nomads and um, like nomads Jacks or nomads and Clay against like Jacks. But there is on a few of the thoughts where Happy, you know would kind of not want to go for Jax, but after, like, season five, and once Clay becomes a rat, happy, damn. Of course, he votes for Mr. Mayhem on Clay. He votes to strip his pack. I mean, to be fair, the only person that didn't vote Mr. Mayhem was Bobby, but that's because he made a bit of a side deal with him. As we go into season six, of course, who has left the VP spot? None other than Bobby Munson. And because Bobby Munson has left the VP spot, that means... The Sergeant Arm spot is up for grabs because Chibs gets promoted into the VP position and then Happy, of course, is put into the Sergeant Arms role. So if we're looking at this from like a timeline perspective, this is probably around like 2012, albeit that is the year the season came out. Suns, as great as the show is, my favourite of all time. I mean, the, 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 time, the, the timeline's in a, in a decent order, but you can't really turn around and say it's a, you know, the greatest order of all time. I do prefer stuff where you know it is laid out on you on you for a map, but um he held this post for about eleven years, is what we're looking at here. But he's been a son for a hell of a lot of years late longer than this. But of course he is in that period where look at our goddamn charter chips. We've dwindled to six guys on motorcycles running bitch boys for the IRA and the Glindo cartel. Jax was onto something happy though. He was not onto something and happy. 
He survives season six with foot a hick. No issues, some great lines in there. Of course, he did get kidnapped towards the end of this season alongside, um, well, the Henry Lynn's uncle. Um, I want to own all the guns in Northern California. California. Happy as took his bait. And there's a funny scene. We've got that, oh, darling, darling, what have I done? He's sitting there eating Chinese, man. What I would be doing for eating a wee bit of Chinese right now. But Happy was absolutely loving life. Of course, he ends up getting freed. And he gets revenge on Lynn's uncle. Um, Lynn's uncle? Lynn's uncle. And then, of course, what do we have there? He's I love you guys. And then he kills him. That's why we love you. Of course, I add it to his wee smiley base collection. And as we go in to season seven, he remains a sergeant at arms um, throughout this season, as I said earlier. And, yeah, of course, he has to do the likes of voting Mr. Mayhem on Jax and all that good stuff. So, yeah, absolutely insane stuff can do. But, you know, like, happy... That's what I'm saying. I said I talked about it earlier. Like his character is great as I think you know he's got some lines. The character, like development and like storylines that he's got for himself in terms of his sons, it was pretty minimal, but he was still a pretty good character in terms of like he's just a badass, you know, he's a Hell's Angel, former Hell's Angel guy you'd want on the roster. But in my instance, where it really stepped up. But of course he had the foot Mr. Mayhem and Jax, they let him go. And yeah, we have the final scene of Happy and Sons is him drinking solo. Well not solo, sadly at the bar with a few other members of Sam Crow. Happy is then reintroduced at the end of season one in the Mayans MC, which, you know, in terms of like timelines, probably about four or five years later, five years after the death of Jack Stell, probably some along those lines, he's introduced right in the season one finale. It was great seeing him and Quinn back. And uh, yeah, we, we think, ah, it's just Sam Crow making a wee cameo appearance, but then Easy has to give a bottle of beer to, oh, give him to my sponsor. Easy turns around and clocks Happy as the man who murdered his mother. What a cliffhanger. You know, that was the good days of the Mayans when Kurt Sutter knew what he was doing and Elgin James wasn't in charge. So, yeah, I mean, that was a really good way. And, and like, it, it sets up it because, like, you've got Happy, who didn't really have a lot of, like, you know, personal screen time in Sons, and now it looks like we're going to get that going into Season 2. And that's, of course, what happens. Of course, going into Season 2, you've got Easy telling Angel about the fact that Happy, a Redwood original, is the one that killed him. And Angel freaking out about this, like, how much detail you put into this. Uh, we then see scenes of Happy in the season two premiere where he's talking about Chucky and he, he notices Felipe when he's with Chucky and he's like, hmm, that's the guy who's supposed to kill, isn't it? So then he looks up his, his history of his own and he discovers, oh, the Reyes brothers. They are actually the spawn of Felipe Reyes, which obviously is not too good for him. And as Happy pays a visit at a wake, the Reyes brothers follow him home, he goes into his house he has a dog called Ope. Lovely wee call back there to Opie from Sons, of course. And then, sadly, for Happy, he's held hostage by the Reyes brothers. And this did take, you know, a lot of the episode up, but I think you can just see how much the, the Reyes brothers truly went up in between, like, their mentalities for here to the end, especially Easy. Like, Easy here, a young pup, so to speak, nowhere near as brutal um, or whatever at this point. Um, and then, of course, they managed to let him go after he essentially gives them all the information that they need to know and that it wasn't personal. It was just, you know, he's a hitman. That's what he does. That's what I do. I get smiley faces after I kill you. And then they turn their attention more to Dita. We do see he shows up at the camper fan later in that season, gives them a bit more information because Packer really is anal about all that stuff. Real coke for happy and all that. And then he helps the Mayans save Alvarez when he was on like the wee, the wee cartwheel thing inside the warehouse. So yeah, great wee scene seeing Happy help Alvarez. Like, you in for helping El Padrino? Hell yeah, that's what Jax would have wanted. Of course, in season two, that's the only line you got in the mines. Happy then tells the, the Reyes brothers, that he, that's them done, we're good. doesn't matter if I kill your mother. <laughs> that's it. That's water under the bridge. We have to forgive each other. And then that is the last we see of Happy until... Season 2, Episode 8, when we get the epic sit-down between Sam Crow, the Mayans, and the Fatos. Here, he doesn't really have a lot of lines, because we've just seen him a lot. It's funny, because, like, after having so much dialogue earlier in, like, you know, the season, he refers back to, like, his son's role, where he just, like, comes up with the one-liners. And, of course, Chibs takes centre stage. But, yeah, this would be the last time we would see Happy until Season 3, when, of course... 
He rides in with Montez. He lets the Mayans know that any time they pay a visit through the Sun's territory, they need to make a phone call. Of course, the the Mayans aren't too happy about this. He even mentions Jax, and then you get big fat Steve going, who's Jax Tell? And Gilly's like, ah, f- fucking nobody, man. He's a jabroni. Um, but he does let know, of course, that Packers get cancelled here, and it's in between this scene that we got happy that... For some reason, which to me just doesn't make any sense, I think this. I think even at this point, you can see that the wheels are going off this Mayans bus. That Happy has in fact been leading Bordeaux. He was leading San Bernardino, which makes no sense, right? Packer gets ill, and then with their VP doesn't want to step up to the task. It, 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 it's Happy. They call in a Redwood original. Now, I'm not saying Happy couldn't be president. I'm not saying he, he can't be president, but not that char. It makes zero sense, like. It's not like you're calling in Jax Teller or something. You're calling in a guy who's never been pressed. It's not even like, oh, we went for experience with that one. I mean, what is this? A job interview? It's not really a job interview. Um, of course, Montez gets killed um, in season three by Apollo. Then dumps the body. Taza. Taza then puts it in an oil barrel. And this body will not get discovered till season four. And then in season four, this body does get discovered. And bam, this is not good for the beast between the Suns and the Mayans because after a big, long Peace Treaty, this gets reignited. And, uh, of course, Doc is now the president of Sam Dino. And uh, Happy's returned to Charming. He has returned to his role of Sergeant at Arms. Um, but, you know, they needed the green light. They needed the green light for Redwood, the originals, and Charming. They get their green light. Sam Dino, essentially, what they do is get massacred. Then in the finale of Season 4, you do get Tig appearing. No real mention of Happy there. And at this point, guys, we're just like, right, When's Redwood Originals going to join this war? And then that's when we get to season five, the final season. We're like, when are we going to get them? And then, of course, we did get those episode descriptions of, oh, easy and Angel Day, a deadly mission on their mother's anniversary. And then we kind of put two and two together on this channel and predicted that it would be this. But I was still kind of shocked at the time. And then, absolutely, guys, we do get the best scene, in my opinion, of the final season where the Reyes brothers do kill Happy. Like I said, this should have happened in season two, but I like the fact that in this scene, he actually acknowledged it and he's like, well, it took you long enough. If anyone did that to my mother, they'd be, they'd be, they'd be dead long time ago, brother. And then they ask him, you know, what did she say when she was dying? He's like, <coughs> I shot her in the fucking throat essay, which was a pretty good ending. Happy gets shot. We then think Happy's death is going to spark Sam Crow to join the war. They don't join the war. Yeah. But, I mean, Quinn knows about it. Alvarez throws his gun down, and that's it. That the, I wish I could say here that's not what happened, but Happy died for nothing, and nothing realistically came of it, and it's a disgrace. But, you know what? Overall, the Mayans was good, guys. Happy, 7.5 out of 10. Until next time, peace.